Hi, you guys, and welcome back. We are going to continue on with our birthstone series. It is March, so we're going to be doing aquamarine. I came up with this super pretty um, aquamarine color. Uh, didn't take me too long. I hope that you guys enjoy it. Real fast before we um, get into the video, I just wanted to take a second to thank... Um, there were several people, but four of them have given me their permission to actually say their name. So I want to thank Miss Bethy and Shell and Amber Love and Babodi. Thank you guys all so much for your support. It means the world to me. I, I can't tell you how much it means um, that you guys are so supportive of me and the channel. So thank you guys again. I hope that you guys continue to enjoy this series. If you have any other requests or questions or anything, as always, make sure you leave them in the comments or send me a DM. So if you want to see how I got this mermaid-esque aquamarine look, then just stay tuned. Hi, you guys, and welcome back. Today, we are going to continue on with the birthstone series. It is March, so we're going to be doing aquamarine. I'm going to be using the Flamingo Palette by Violet Voss for this tutorial. I've already done all of my complexion. I will make sure and leave a link to one of my videos that has um, how I do my skincare and complexion and all that up in the corner. Uh, I will also put a picture of the actual palette itself, which looks like this. But I will put a picture up there and make sure to mark each color that I use so that you can follow along if you are going to try and recreate this um, look. So I'm going to start out, I already primed my eyes with my MAC Paint Pot and Painterly and I just set it with my Hourglass Setting Powder. I'm going to go ahead and pick up a brush and just put a little bit more setting powder on both eyes. My allergies are going bananas right now, so I'm hoping I'm going to be able to get through this without everything watering off in the corners. I'm using my allergy drops, but today seems to be particularly bad, so I'm hoping I'm going to be able to get through this because I am going to try and apply false lashes in this video, which I don't typically wear because of my lilash, but I thought with these blues that I'm going to be using that it would be... Um, appropriate to put on false lashes. So starting in the palette, the first color that I'm going to pick up, let's see, I'm actually just now looking at it. Anytime I sit down to do these, I never plan ahead. I just grab a palette. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go in with Oceanfront, which is pretty blue. Well, I hope it's not chalky. I haven't used this palette hardly at all. So I picked a little bit of that up. You know what? That makes me a little bit nervous. Let me grab, let me just grab a palette that has a transition in it that I know will work. Uh, I'm actually going to use the Riviera for my first color, and I will just use the color State. And again, I'll place that up there. I'm going to use that as my transition color. So just taking it from the outer edge all the way in. And I do windshield wiper motions as well as little swirls. Because even with windshield wiper motions, when you're blending, you can still get a very harsh line up there. If you just stay in the same place and you're just doing this back and forth, It'll be super blended right where you'd bet, but you can still get harsh lines above or beyond. So if you do windshield wiper motions and the little swirls back and forth, you'll get a much more smooth blend the first time. All right, I'm going to put just a little bit more on there. Okay, and then I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to the other eye. So Aquamarine is the birthstone for March. Aquamarine is also known as the poor man's diamond. I was doing some research, like I do every month when I do um, these videos, I do a lot of research on it so I can give you guys some interesting facts about the stones. 
Now, I know that as far as the Zodiac goes, most, no, I think all months, I don't know, somebody will correct me, um, whether you're born at the beginning of the month or the end of the month, you could be two different Zodiac signs. I'm just concentrating on the actual birth stones themselves. So when I looked up aquamarine, um, that was one of the things that it said was that it was the poor man's diamond. It never fails when I start to film. Someone starts to call me. All right, I'm gonna keep this brush to the side here so that when I go back to blend, I have it. And then now I'm just gonna pick up that other Morphe that I had the color ocean front on from the Flamingo palette, from the Violet Gloss palette. And I'm gonna start that right out here in my outer corner. and bring that in so aquamarine can range from colors of like sea foam uh, sea green and the deeper the color the more expensive the stone is it's also known as the sailor stone because they believed that aquamarine, the stone itself, came out of the mermaid's treasure tre treasure chest. So they believed that if you had aquamarine on you, it would lead you home. It would make sure that you wouldn't get lost. It was kind of a protection thing. All right, this color is a little bit chalky. So I'm going to try and build this up a little bit. Aquamarine is the official stone of Colorado. I found that interesting. I didn't even know that states had official stones. I need to look up and see what Florida's is. This color is not... Um, this is not one of my favorite colors I've ever worked with. It is pretty chalky and I'm really glad I put that other transition shade down or I think I would already be having a mess and having to start this over. I am quickly going to put a little bit of my hourglass translucent powder underneath my eyes to catch any fallout that I might get. My confidence level is not super high with this palette right now so I just want to cover myself and make sure I don't have to start this all over again. The largest cut aquamarine is actually in the Smithsonian. It was the something Pedro, um, Dom Pedro? I think it was the Dom Pedro aquamarine. I'll make sure and list that up there and I'll put a picture of it as well. Um, but that was the largest cut, ne largest known cut. I can't remember how much it actually, or how many carrots it actually is, but I know that when they cut it, it was cut from a gem or a stone that weighed over a hundred pounds. It's really pretty and I'll make sure and put a, a picture of it in the video. Okay, I think I've built that up <laughs> about as well as I'm gonna be able to. I'm gonna go ahead and pick up a little bit of beach ball and I'm gonna try and mix that in with ocean front on the back of my hand and see if I can maybe get that to blend a little bit better. All right, so I mixed a couple of those together and I'm gonna try and put that in and see if that is a little bit more helpful to me. And yes, it is. Okay. So when I mix the two colors together, I'm definitely getting a better payoff and it's also blending a lot better too. All right, so I'm just gonna keep mixing those two together and trying to build this up a little bit. Um, some other things that I learned was that they believed that aquamarine, aquamarine had healing powers. So they thought that it helped um, with 
uh, muscle tension, also with tension headaches. That it was, or that it's used to assist um, in like guidance, that it would help to bring you some clarity, uh, which is another reason why they say that uh, it's the Sailor's Stone because you wanted to be able to be clear-minded out there to have your sense of direction and make sure that you didn't get lost and that you always came home. It is also believed that aquamarine can be used to assist in stomach problems as well as the throat. So in more modern times, they say that um, aqua, carrying aquamarine with you when you have to do any kind of public speaking or anything like that, that it can help you with the clarity and the way that you speak. Actually, I should probably have some with me when I film because I never know what I'm saying. All right. I think that's about as built up. Oh, that is chalky. I think that's about as built up as we're going to get it. Hopefully, we'll be able to save this with the um, other colors that I'm going to put on. I'm going to grab a flat brush that I use like this for all of my um, shadows that um, are like glittery or um, have sheen. So any duochrome or anything like that, I am going to go ahead and get it wet. I'm using the color Tidal Wave and I'm going to start this about the middle of my eye and go out that one performs well. That looks really pretty. I like that shade. And they also believe that it can help with um, your liver as well as your emotions to try and keep your emotions in check, which I guess kind of goes back to the sailors when they would be out and away from their families. Um, it would help them to stay focused so that they wouldn't, um, you know, be missing home and not be at their A game when you're out on the open water. Okay, I am now, I actually like that color. That one turned out pretty good. I'm going to go back in with that original, not the original blending brush, but the one that had the um, ocean front and beach ball on it. And just go back over that. Now, this may not be an everyday wearable look for someone to go out wearing blue. And I know a lot of the birthstone, within this birthstone series, a lot of the looks that I'm doing may not be something that you would want to wear just every day to work. But I wanted to gear them more toward a night out for your birthday or something like that because um, I can do everyday looks all the time on my channel. I wanted the birthstone series to be a little bit more dramatic, something that you could do if you were going out for your birthday or something like that. Um, the next color, I'm going to just set this palette to the side and we'll come back to it to do our under eyes. And that's something I was going to say, if you wanted to like tone any of these looks down, you could still totally do neutrals on the top and then just do the pop of color on the underneath of your eye, on your under eye, and you could still get a really pretty aquamarine look or any other color that I do. If you're not, if you don't feel like you want to wear those colors um, during the daytime or whatever, you could always just do it underneath your eyes. You still get that, that fun pop of color, but in a more wearable way. To me, I don't care. I'll wear anything all day long. It doesn't bother me. But if that is a concern of yours, then that's an easy way to switch it up. Just use it at, um, on your under eyes rather than your entire eye. All right, I am going to be using next the Stila Magnificent Metals, and I will put the color in the description. It looks like this. It is blinding and beautiful. And that's the color that we're going to be using on our the inner part of our eye, that one third where I didn't use, there we go, that one third where I didn't use the Violet Voss palette. Um, I put it on the back of my hand and then I pick it up with the brush. It gives me more control and uh, it's more sanitary that way as well. 
So I'm gonna place that right on the inner corner and I'm going to kind of dab it so that I don't move the colors underneath around and it'll also blend that out for me. That is such a pretty, pretty color. Now with these, you do not have a whole lot of time to work. They dry quickly, which is great because you don't have a lot of transfer, but you just need to keep that in mind when you're using them that you're not gonna have a whole lot of time to play around with them. They're gonna set pretty quickly. But man, do they make makeup easy. Just like that. How fast is that? All right, I am going to move to our bottom lash line. And for that, I am going to, oh shoot. For that, I am gonna grab my Marc Jacobs. And uh, this is in the color Whirlpool, I believe, but I'll put it up above. And I'm gonna put that in my water line. That looks pretty. And then as always for my tight line, I am going to use my Marc Jacobs in Earthquake. I'm gonna take my Tom Ford eyeliner and I'm going to use the, where's it at? I'm gonna use the smaller end, which is right here. And I'm just gonna draw a very, very, very thin line since we're gonna be putting falsies on, I want a thin line just to cover the lash band. And the reason I'm using this liner is because it goes over glitter with no problem. And for my eyes, I actually stop right before I get to the end because my eyes are downturned. So if I actually followed my entire eye all the way down, like right now when you look at me, do you see how it looks kind of almond shape? If I were to take it all the way down, it would droop my eye and make me look more tired. Whereas with this eye, you can see the difference between this one. Okay, and now I'm gonna go back into my Anastasia Beverly Hills Riviera palette, and I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of that color Sales, and I'm just gonna put that right underneath my brow bone for a little bit of a brow highlight. I'm not going with something shimmery just because we have so much going on. I don't want that to be too crazy, and I am also gonna use that as a base for my inner corner highlight, I am gonna add something else there. But for right now, we're just gonna put sail on the inner corner. And then right before we finish, we will add another color. Would actually be another medium, but. Now I am going to take a very flat definer brush like this and I am going to go into the color beach ball and I'm going to press that right up against my lash line all right to blend it out I'm going to get a pencil brush and I'm going to go back into beach ball mixed with that ocean front and just go right up underneath of it and blow that down Okay. So this is what we have so far. I think I want to deepen up this outer corner just a little bit. So I'm gonna pick up just a little bit of that beach ball on its own and just dab right there. 
yeah and then bring that to where it connects on the bottom yeah I like that better see how much different see the difference that that makes in your eye shape Okay, so the best tip that I can give you on applying false lashes is to wait until the glue gets tacky. And the second thing is to have a mirror and look down when you're applying your lashes. It helps so much to be looking down rather than trying to do it looking straight ahead. It's much, much easier to look down and do it. Once I apply it, then I pick up my lash applicators um, a lot of people use tweezers I just prefer these because they have the little pinchy thing like that Let me see. there you go so that I can clasp clasp them together and attach the front make sure the end is where I want it and then just kind of push it into place and then when everything is where I want it I just clasp them together just be careful not to get your skin and I will put the lashes that I'm using up I think they're the Ardell wispies and depending on the kind of lashes that you get, like the quality, you can use them anywhere from one. I have, um, you know, some drugstore that they're really not worth much after the first use. And then I have some from Lily Lash um, that, I mean, can last 25, 30 times just depending on how well you take care of them. You want to make sure that you get the glue off and that you store them in a good container so that you don't lose them. All right, once I have my lashes on, I am going to go ahead and grab my mascara and I am opening a brand new thing of my Lights Camera Lashes. This is my all-time favorite mascara. And I'm going to put a coat of that on just to make sure that my lashes blend in with the falsies. Now a trick that I do, after I've worn my false lashes a couple of times, the mascara can get built up on it. Now these are a brand new pair, so I'm using the mascara but when I go to use them again instead of putting mascara on the bottom like I am right now I'll just take my eyeliner and run it right under to cover up where the lash glue might be or whatever so that you can't see it and that way it saves on your lashes too they'll last a whole lot longer that way but these are brand new so I'm gonna put a coat of mascara on them And when you are doing lashes, don't get um, discouraged if you struggle the first time. It takes several, several times to get lashes down. And depending on your eye shape, um, what I suggest when my clients are trying to do them, I have them cut the lashes in half and apply a half at a time. It gives you a lot more control, especially if you're working with the outer ones. Just cut them in half and try to apply the outer ledges out, outer edges just give yourself kind of a wing some extra volume out there on the edges until you get used to how they feel the way they go on and all that stuff once you get that then start adding the inner half and see how you feel with that and then once you progress and move along then you can do a full strip lash all right I am going to put some mascara on my lower lashes okay then just to finish up I am going to take my other Stila and I'll put the name of this one up there as well. I think it might be Perlina or something like that. It looks like this. And I am just going to pick a little bit of that up on another flat brush. And I'm just going to pop that right on the inner corner. 
where we put that matte color sail from the Riviera palette. And then that will really give you an inner corner sparkle. Okay, that is it for the eyes. For the lip, I am definitely gonna be keeping this very, very neutral. So I'm gonna wipe off my Um, what am I trying to say? I had a lip treatment on there. Try to, I'll wipe that off. And then I'm going to grab my Gerard Cosmetics. And I think it's in the color nude, but I'll look it up and see. I'm pretty sure it's a nude. And I didn't overdraw or anything. I just went within my regular lip line. And I am going to grab the Anastasia Liquid Lip. I do not remember the color, but it looks like this. It's a very, very pale. Buxom, and I don't know the color, but I will list that above as well. I'm just gonna put that right on the top for more glitter. Okay, I will be right back. I'm gonna go um, take my hair down and I will be back to finish up back in just a second. Okay, I am all finished. Um, I think this turned out really pretty actually. I know that can be really intimidating to work with blues, but just go with what you feel comfortable. And anytime you're trying something new, don't do it right before you're getting ready to go out and do something. Uh, do it at night before you take your makeup off. The colors that you think you would never be able to wear, that's when you try it. Sit down and have a good time and enjoy yourself. That's what makeup's about. Remember, there are no such thing as disabilities, only different abilities. And until next time, I love you all. God bless.